welcome to Wolf's Words, a series of informational videos about school choice brought to you by Conduit for Commerce. I'm your host, Dr. Patrick Wolf. Today's topic is parent empowerment and school choice. And I'm delighted to have with me my dear friend, Virginia Walden Ford, the queen of parent empowerment and school choice. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Virginia. Thank you, Pat. It's so happy to be here. So Virginia is the inspiration for the new Hollywood movie, Miss Virginia, which is available through all the major streaming services and is making its television debut today, February 19th, on Black Entertainment Television. In addition to this very exciting movie, which you must see, Virginia recently published a book, School Choice, a legacy to keep. So Virginia, what inspired you to write the book? Um, let me tell you, we were doing all these things, getting prepared for the movie, and they were making me think back about all the experiences I'd had, particularly the ones growing up. And I thought, you know, this is a time that I should be doing something to leave to the parents and the kids that I've worked with over the years, but also to leave to my children. So it kind of started as just writing down things to help the filmmakers, and it turned to a book. <laughs> That's great. It is great. So, so tell us a bit about your origin story, about growing up in Little Rock. Well, I'm um, a child of school teachers. My parents, who went to the University of Arkansas, both of them, and um, were teachers of the Little Rock School District. My mother was one of four black teachers to integrate schools in Little Rock, and my father was the first black assistant superintendent of the Little Rock School District. And so I grew up in a family of educators, aunts, uncles, cousins, all. But my parents were the strongest people I've ever met. And during the time when both mommy and daddy were uh, appointed to white schools, or daddy in his position in Little Rock School District, there were a lot of people that didn't want him to. I was a young teenager in middle school. And, um, and the Klan let themselves be known and burned across in our yard, threw rocks through our windows. And I remember my dad telling me, you know, don't grow up and be bitter and mean and evil because of the other people's actions. If you can't do something to change the world, you know, then don't do anything, but you must do something to change the world. And I think at 13 or 14, which is what I was at that time, I, I remember thinking, you know, I want to do something to change the world. I never had any idea what my future life would look like, but I knew that I wanted to do something special. And, um, and they always encouraged us to do that. So that was kind of my beginnings. I went away to college, you know, got married, had children, and... Um, found myself in the 80s, the early 90s, struggling with my own children being in school and thinking that they weren't getting what they needed. And, uh, and I had to do something about it. So Virginia, in the 1990s, you were in Washington, D.C. What happened there that put you on the path to becoming a parent activist for school choice? Well, I was a single mother. I was trying to support three children and get them through school. My two older kids were very, very academically driven. They were in the school. They, they could have learned anywhere. But I have a younger son who was really struggling and, uh, and found himself being pulled by the streets. I, I just couldn't keep him out of the streets. The drug dealers were courting him. The gangs were courting him. They were giving him things that pull kids away from you, especially, and I didn't have anywhere to turn. But the biggest thing was a teacher told me, William cannot learn. Now, I, you might as well just let him hang out in the streets because he he's just going to fail. He will not learn. He's not smart. And, um, and I remember that made me so angry. And right at that moment, you know, the police were bringing him home. But I decided I'm going to do something to save this boy. I'm going to do something. And so I began to go to a Board of Education meeting where I was dismissed, <laughs> if you will, and kind of told, well, you know, eventually 
things are going to change. We're doing all these things. But I couldn't accept that. You know, I mean, I was watching not only my child, but kids in the neighborhood just fail. And, you know, 13-year-old fathers and kids on drugs and, and the gangs were getting just, you know, holding on to them tighter and tighter and tighter. And um, as much as I was always a, kind of a behind-the-scenes mother, I would rather bake the cake than to take it to the school. And uh, I knew that I had to do something to speak out, if you will, and talk to these people. And right at that time, I heard that Dick Army, Representative Dick Army, was talking about trying to start a scholarship program for African American kids in D.C. Well, kids in D.C., poor kids in D.C. And I thought, well, if I could talk to him and tell my story, then uh, maybe he'll hear me and maybe something could be done to help my son. And through a series of wonderful events, you know, meeting certain <laughs> people, Jeannie Allen, Patrick Wolf, other people, you know, I, I found myself in a hearing on the Education Workforce Committee chaired by Dick Army and uh, talking to him about how terrible it is that we're losing so many kids and we needed to uh, do something. And he kind of said to me, he and a number of other representatives said, if you would be willing to speak about this, you have a good story, then maybe we can make some changes. And that was in 1996. And, uh, and I've been speaking ever since because it became very clear to me during that time that a voice of a parent talking about their child and their needs for their child is something that every representative needed to hear. And I had all these parents around me that had similar stories. So it, that was the beginning of my activism, even though it was, you know, kind of low key during that time. Um, the more people that got involved and the more we were able to use our voices, most poor parents, black, white, it doesn't matter, don't think they have a right to use their voices. And so we would just tell them, you have every right to speak out about your children. And uh, our, our forum was Congress, you know, but our challenge was members of Congress fighting for our kids because we don't elect them. And so we had to get enough parents to talk to members of Congress so they fill our hearts and we would get to theirs, and we did. So, Virginia, how did you feel in January of 2004 when Congress passed and President Bush signed the legislation that created the D.C. Opportunity Scholarship Program? Patrick, it was probably the most amazing day of my life. I, uh, I remember thinking, we actually did this. We actually were able to find a way to get an option that didn't exist for DC kids, for kids who wouldn't normally have a, a chance. And I, and I also remember thinking, I need to go talk to the parents because I, I was alone actually when I got the initial news and then the day when I put President Bush signed it into law, of course, we took parents in. But it was an amazing field. And, um, and I thought back about what my father had said when I was 14, do something to make a difference in the world, do something to change the world. You know, don't sit around. He, it was a real long speech he gave. <laughs> don't, don't sit around and uh, complain and not do anything. You know, make sure you're in service to your community. And, and I felt like in spite of all the naysayers, all the people that told us that we would fail and told us that told me that DC parents wouldn't fight for their kids, you know, I, I felt vindicated. <laughs> you know, I felt like, you know, we showed them. And it was for them, you know, this film that has come out in this book is certainly about my life and my experiences, but the parents that believed us and and stood with us are, in my opinion, the heroes in this story. Because Senator Fritz from Tennessee said to me, you know, it gave him a lot of really good feelings to be able to talk about the scholarship program on the Senate floor 
when he'd look around and see the parents. And most of the parents that we worked with had not had those kind of experiences before. They lived in troubled, challenged areas of D.C. and never left, had never been to the Hill. So I feel humbled that the film, you know, chronicles my experience, but I feel good that parents can look at it. And I've talked to some of the parents where they were actually involved and see what we did together. So Virginia, the professor in me needs to ask that question. This is a discussion of parent empowerment and school choice. So does parent empowerment lead to school choice or does school choice lead to more empowered parents? I think it's the answer is both. Mm -hmm. I think that parents that choose schools for their children and see their children do well are empowered mm -hmm. and they become um, wonderful advocates for their children once they see them in situations that they benefit from, where they thrive and do well. You know, I've seen parents who had never been involved in the school all of a sudden become one of the um, room mothers mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever. And so, so yeah, so, but I think it's both ways. I think without parents in this movement, then we will see a lot more failures. You know, I think parents have to be a part of the fight for school choice. We are the first teachers of our children. We are our children's advocates. And if the world doesn't see us advocate for our children, then they won't either. And that's the one thing I learned during our legislative fight. They kept saying, bring more and more parents. And it, for a minute, I didn't quite get that. But the more parents that came, the more parents, the more members of Congress listened. And the more successes we started seeing in hearings, you know, where we'd win a committee or, you know, some committee would acknowledge us or some uh, legislator would support us who had said they wouldn't. So I think it's both ways. I think that, you know, we must find that platform for parents to be able to continue to find ways to start school choice programs. But I think that once parents are in programs, they are thrilled, excited, and they want to become a part of their children's educational experience. I know I did. You know, the first time William went to a private school, and uh, they told me I had to do volunteer work. I was so excited. I was like, what can I do? Now, I know a lot of people don't feel that way, but I did. <laughs> I was like, well, what y'all want me to do? You know, and, and they gave us assignments. And I thought, what? A, and I was with other parents. And we talked about our kids. And I really never had experienced that with him. And um, most of the time, I was trying to keep him from cutting class and leaving school after I dropped them all for, you know, I can't remember one time I went to the school and they said something positive about my child. And uh, mm -hmm. so this was a whole new experience for me. And I assume it's the same way with most parents who have not had those kinds of experience. You go in there and all of a sudden you're a part of their, your child's education instead of just dropping them off at the door. Mm -hmm. So what would you say is the main lesson in school choice, a legacy to keep? I mean, what, what is the big takeaway that you want to share with people? You know, I love this book. I loved writing this book because it allowed me to say to people, one voice can make a difference, you know, that no one would have ever thought that I could have changed something so critical in D.C. and ultimately benefit other people in other places. And so what I want parents and supporters and everybody to take away from the students, take away from this book is you have, there's power in your voice. Learn to use your voice. Mm -hmm. Learn to speak out for the things you believe in. Inform yourself and make sure you know exactly what you want to say. And because using we don't use our voices enough, and you know during the sixties and seventies people did use their voices, and then there was a period where it just stopped. And so, in in writing this book, I wanted people to 
I, I want to leave the movie and ask the question, what happened to Virginia Walden for? What mm -hmm. happened to her? Where is she? What is she doing? She helped Patrick Wolf evaluate the program. <laughs> that's, what, that's what happened. And, you, and he was amazing. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that's, that's the kind of what I want. I want mm -hmm. people to look at this book. A mother wrote me last night and said, she found me on Facebook, and she said, I just I saw the movie last night. I just want you to know it gave me power and hope. That's it. Wow. Those are Wolf's words today on parent empowerment and school choice. And it was my great privilege to have with me the real Miss Virginia, Miss Virginia Walden Ford, author of School Choice, A Legacy to Keep. Join us next time for more Wolf's Words. <laughs>